Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another podcast episode on Real Talk. This is episode 32. I feel like we just started these yesterday and we're already on episode 32. It's insane. Today, I am here with our rehab coordinator, Jen. Um, Steve was supposed to be in here, but he got a little busy. So Jen is filling in for him. She is just as amazing. Um, As I said, she's a rehab coordinator. Do you want to say anything before we get started? Um, no, just, you know, I try to keep track of the projects that we're doing and mm-hmm. uh, all the moving pieces that go along with that. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So, um, as I said, we are doing Rehab Nightmares. So, I'm not all the way in Bulldog. I'm more in the marketing side of things, of course, but I do still have my own Rehab Nightmares from my parents. Um, as If you guys have listened to any of the other episodes, I kind of grew up in the industry um, and helped my parents a lot with their uh, rentals that they would do. And one, as soon as we started doing this, or we came up with this topic, one immediately came to mind. Um, my parents bought a house from an auction. So as you know, you can't like do a walkthrough on it or anything prior. Okay, really, yeah. You can try, <laughs> but not really. Maybe like peek through the windows or something. Um, so they bought one, and when they got the keys, they went inside, and they found someone living there. Mm. Um, he was coming in through one of the windows somehow, and he there was no power, there was no plumbing, nothing, and he was starting to strip the house of all of like the copper and the all of the plumbing, just taking it out and going and um oh what's it called um like selling it yes thank yeah you. I yeah think. and um he <laughs> because there was no plumbing or electricity he had one of the bedrooms was his bathroom. And it was just filled with feces. And then the other bedroom was where he was sleeping. And mind you, this was in like February. So it was freezing cold. He had like a propane heater that he was running. So there were a bunch of just like empty propane tanks everywhere. Mm. And it was a disaster. My parents had to go in and put in all new plumbing, all new electrical, because he had stripped absolutely everything out of it. And of course, we, I mean, it was, it was down to the studs. It was absolutely horrible and the smell was bad my poor brothers had to go in and rip up the carpet how do you get that smell out of there we there was an ozone machine that sat in there um we swore by ozone machines we did that in almost every property Mm -hmm. we did um ozone i think there were two there was one in the back of the house and one in the front like in the living room area and i want to say those sat in there for about a week and a half and my poor brothers like i said they had to go in and tear up all the carpet and everything I just had to go in and do a final clean, luckily. I didn't have to do a lot like my brothers and my parents. Um, but I remember when I went in the first time after they like got him out, it was a whole ordeal with the police too. Um, but it was a disaster from the beginning. Once they got everything out and moving, it went pretty well. But that initial first, it was horrible. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Horrible. Well, and we've had, it's funny, we've had all of those things but not really in one house, Mm -hmm. you know? So we've had the squatters at different properties. um, And like you said, they're living in a place where there's no electricity, Mm -hmm. there's no running water. um, So it's awful and you have to, you know, get them out or call the police or, you know, change the locks and try to deter them from coming in. So we'll try to set an alarm. Um, You know, yeah, we've had some pretty bad properties that it looks like, there ha- you know, maybe the squatter isn't in there currently, mm-hmm. but there have been in there. There's drug paraphernalia. Like mm-hmm. you said, there's there's human waste. There's all that stuff. You know, thank goodness yeah. we have good trash out guys because they earn their money. Um, <laughs> you know, and then I am familiar with the ozone machine because mm-hmm. we ran that at a property that had – I think they had cats. I think they had like 15 cats and I don't have anything against cats, but you know, sometimes when they are not kept track of or mm-hmm. not cared for or whatever, um I think they can do a lot of damage to a property in terms of like smell mm-hmm. and and everything else. Oh, so, yeah. yeah, I know what you're saying. We've had the horror stories not all in one house. That's that's pretty good. That's pretty much everything. All in one house, but um, you know, definitely at different properties. And we're dealing with mm-hmm. one now where we did the rehab. There were tenants in there, and now we're doing what we call the turn. Mm-hmm. And there's been 
a lot. There's been extensive damage. Like the mm. furnace has been stolen. Oh my gosh. Yes. The kitchen cabinets were out in the backyard. Yeah. So I know. Oh man. It's Yeah. So speaking of cats and turns, um, one of the other rehab nightmares I was gonna tell you about is um we had a tenant that was in a property. Um I don't, I'm not entirely sure what ended up happening with them if they just moved out or if we had to go through an eviction process. Um, but I do remember that my parents do not allow pets in their mm -hmm. rentals. Mm -hmm. And this one in particular, when she moved out, um, of course, the property was left trashed. And we went in and found out that she had, I want to say like three or four cats, and but didn't like take care of them at all. And again, I have nothing against cats either. They are just, I feel like you have to, it's a lot of upkeep with them. Yes. And they did not do that at all. And so the, I don't even think there was a litter box. I think they just, she just let them go wherever. Mm. And we had to do a complete trash out again, down to the studs on it. Um, the carpet, you walked in on the carpet and you could just hear like squishing sound. And it, you would walk out and like, under like into like the kitchen area where there was tile and your feet would leave like wet prints mm. because of how much moisture was in there and the smell was horrible overwhelming yeah and so growing up we never i my mom or my dad or my stepdad would they would like talk about a property and they would always call it by the address that it was on kind of like what we do here right and I'd be like, yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. And so it started getting to a point where we started naming them based on what happened in that house. Oh. And so this one was referred to as the cat house. Yes. And those are the two like prominent ones I always remember. And again, my poor brothers had to do the trash out on that wow. one as well. And that one, they were more upset about that one, uh, believe it or not, than the other one. Mm -hmm. I think it was just because the carpet was actually like wet yeah. here. And the, but it was also, I think this one was more in the fall, but. Yeah. Well, and I think the, maybe the first one, because they couldn't look at it, it was kind of like, they didn't expect it to be that bad, yeah. but they didn't know what to expect. Mm -hmm. Whereas this one, there was a tenant in there. You don't expect, you just don't expect people mm -hmm. to do that. No, not mm -hmm. at all. And it's, it's always mind blowing to me how, how they do. Right. And how, you know, they're okay with doing that. I'm just like, what? Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. yeah, yeah, it's insane. And then on the flip side, you have some really good tenants. Oh, absolutely. Who, you know, are respectful and take care of the place and, you know, call if there's something mm -hmm. wrong. So, you, yeah, you just don't know what you're getting sometimes. Yeah. I know um, we have one resident um, in one of our properties. Um, I manage for the properties for my parents. And they have been there, I think, for like 12 years. Absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. um, no complaints them get at all. And that's most of them. But every once in a while, here and there, you'll get one. Um, and like the first one, that wasn't even technically a tenant-related issue. That was just bought from an auction. Right, right. But, so, yeah, anything can happen. But Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. But we have had our share of nightmare, you know, or horror stories. Mm -hmm. Um Probably, I think the biggest one that sticks out in my mind is the five feet of water in the basement. Oh, gosh. Um, so last winter, and, you know, the bad news is this happened. The good news is it led to an awareness and a process of, okay, we need to shut the water off in the winter because it was a cold week in, you know, February or something in the middle of winter. So the pipes froze. And then when they warmed up and thawed, you had this mess. And I just remember this was between us looking at the property to see if we were going to buy it mm -hmm. and then to after we, you know, had closed on it and could actually go in and scope it. So you've got that kind of gray area there where mm -hmm. you don't own it yet. Right. But you kind of have to, like, be monitoring it, I guess. So now, like before we close, you know, I, I am reminded all the time, okay, do I go need to do I need to go and turn off the water at such mm -hmm. and such place? Mm -hmm. And if it's in the summer, I don't worry about it too much, but certainly next winter it's gonna be on my radar and it'll be something that I do mm -hmm. because like I said, we walked, you know, we're ready to walk into this place and the window in the basement was 
just kind of partially open and you could just hear the water like pouring into the basement and I mean I had boots on but no you know I would have needed a whole like (laughs) wetsuit to get down there and actually turn off the water so we ended up calling back to the office and our person who deals with utilities she had them turn off the water at the curb you know so it would Mm. stop flooding everywhere into the basement and then luckily we do have you know a guy who we know a guy who can (laughs) pump water out of the basement (laughs) and that was the start but like I said it taught me about definitely going and turning off the water and Mm -hmm. being aware of like the frozen pipe situation um, you know in terms of Got to make sure the furnace is working at mm-hmm. these places if they're sitting and stuff like that. And yeah. also kind of taught me that for the most part, like everything is fixable because this was awful and <laughs> completely yeah. blew our budget. Yes. Um, but it wasn't unfixable. Mm-hmm. There yeah. was stuff you could do. You know, you replace the drywall, you replace the lights, you replace the... Oh my basically gosh, yes. everything and but you do have this you, you know you don't have to knock the house down right of um, course it can be saved mm-hmm. but but that was a good you know kind of a teachable moment i guess yeah i remember when i walked through that property mm-hmm. um I, I think i was with you and i looked up and one of the the light fixtures was filled with water mm-hmm. brown water yes. and i'm like oh gosh yeah oh gosh that's that's going to be taken down. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, it's that property. You guys did an amazing job on that property. But g- you're right. Absolutely right. Is it can be fixed mm-hmm. and it may not be fun. And it's going to take it's going to take a lot of work yeah. and a lot of, you know, a lot of time sometimes. But I mean, I think we have a tenant in there now. So mm-hmm. and it is it's a nice little property. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it is very nice. Um, I actually think I posted that one on. Bulldog Renovations Facebook and Instagram. Um, also, put if you're watching this on YouTube, I'll put some pictures up in the video of it as well. Um, but certainly, going into any rehab, you're ne- you never know 100% what you're getting yourself into until you actually get in there and you start doing work. Yes, that is that is very true. Mm-hmm. I mean, we had another one. I wouldn't say it was a nightmare, but it was very costly. Where Yes, the floors seemed a little uneven, um, but we didn't know until there was a buyer who got their own inspection that, okay, this foundation needed, you know, to be just kind of mitigated, I guess you would call it. Mm -hmm. So, again, it was fixable. Mm -hmm. Don't have to knock the house down. Don't have to start over. But it was costly. Right. So, and now I think that house is under contract again. So crossing our fingers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That, that, that goes really, through. Yeah. That's another thing too. Um, I, I, like I said, I'm not really as involved with Bulldog as far as the renovations process and everything goes. Um, but I know I've done quite a bit of research myself on renovations and everything. And is when you are creating a budget, leave room in the budget for the unexpected. Right. I mean, in the case of the five foot water property, you can't, that's not something that you would probably le- have left that much room in the budget for. Right. No. But like you said, things happen mm-hmm. and you make it work. Right. Exactly. And, and yeah, you can have your contingency plan, but you know, that should have been an easy rehab and it was just kind of a, not a natural disaster, <laughs> but a yeah. unforeseen, you know, mm-hmm. thing that happened. Absolutely. And, yeah. I would say too, in terms of, you know, since we're still going on, on nightmares or, or rehab horror stories, when we first got into the apartments and I, I know the apartments oh, yeah. have probably been a theme of many podcasts and <laughs> yeah. and vlogs that there were some of those where yes you set the budget most of them probably 90% of them adhered to that budget mm-hmm. but again there were things that you could not have predicted right um we had a lot of issues there well there had been a lot of deferred maintenance there mm-hmm. so we had a lot of issues there with old plumbing leaks you know that we thought we addressed, but then until a tenant actually got in there and maybe Mm -hmm. moved in upstairs, you didn't know what was happening in the unit downstairs. Um, 
lot of issues with bugs in that place, you yeah. know, and it was, I think just the season, you know, spring, summer, whatever. I said, mm -hmm. oh, I can't wait for the first hard frost so we can stop having to deal with <laughs> fleas. The summer was so much about yeah, the, fleas. Yeah. You know, I, sure. I would carry bug spray in mm -hmm. my car and like spray my legs <laughs> down before I would go into a new property. No, seriously. No, I know. Or they That's... would be, I mean, it's gross to say, but they would be like jumping off of your pants. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, I have two dogs at home. I don't want to bring that home to them. Or right, of to course. My house. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was kind of the summer of bugs and um, the summer of drains was the other one. <laughs> yeah. Um, but again, we learned through that. We had probably three consecutive drain problems um, of houses that we had recently finished the rehab on. And unfortunately, I think in all three cases, there were already residents in there. So mm -hmm. that made it more challenging to fix the drain. Yeah. So we have started now, we've partnered up with a company that does a drain um, cleaning and then mm -hmm. it will do a scope for us with a video camera um, and it'll put it on a flash drive for us. Yeah. So that has really helped because we probably have, you know, maybe one out of eight houses that'll have some kind of a problem. And sometimes it's a huge expensive problem. Right. But I guess if there's any silver lining, it's that at least there's no tenant in there that we're displacing mm -hmm. or is living in such a condition that, you know, you just wouldn't want to see. Right. Yeah. And you're getting it at the very beginning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's, I feel like that's a huge thing to point out for BDR the past year is it has been not only a learning 12 months, but a growing 12 months. And we have grown so much and we have learned so much, um, like what you were saying with the scoping the drains, that I feel like ever since we started doing that, has been a huge game changer for us for, and for the better. And it's, I think it's been working out pretty well. Um, I know my house needs to get the drains scoped. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, and it's scary a little bit because you're like, what are they going to find? Mm -hmm. I mean, every time you take that chance that there's going to be something wrong. Mm -hmm. And these are old houses. Yeah. But you can't just you can't just stick your head in the ground, you know. Right. You right. have to know what's going on. Um, yeah. And and you owe that to, we owe that to our tenants, and we owe it to our investors Absolutely. to be presenting them with a property that we mm -hmm. can kind of say we've checked this. We know you know that it's that it's good. Yeah, absolutely. And I wonder too, um, how many other providers are doing going to this extent that we are now doing mm -hmm. uh, to provide the utmost um, quality that we can provide. Yeah. So. Yeah, I don't know because I've not, you know. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty new to the business, but I'm glad that we're doing it because, yeah. like I said, we just had it just hit us when we had these these problems you know bam 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 in a row and we're like we can't mm -hmm. you know we can't put the we can't put our investors through this we want them to buy more houses from us mm -hmm. so this is a way to you know let them know that we're doing our due diligence and we're doing everything we can to you know present them with a a, a good investment one yeah, that absolutely. is going to pay off for them and not be a headache and a frustration and a, oh, my gosh, I'm going to have to spend how much money on this? <laughs> you know? Yeah. And I don't have a tenant in there. You know, that's yep. that's a bad combination. I think also this uh, conversation reminded me of um, how we were talking about growing and learning. Uh, I think it was actually brought up in the BAM board meeting that we had earlier today, uh, the blue tape inspection. Mm -hmm. So we – that was – what we used to call our quality assurance um and personally since i've been here i've noticed we no longer call it blue tape inspection now you just call it qa inspection right um and i feel like that alone has changed drastically um i feel like before it it worked but not to the extent that we needed it to work and it kind of felt um partially done mm -hmm. if you will and now I feel like it's a lot more thorough and there's a much clearer process in it. We are having a much quicker um, turnover – or not turnover, but time frame of getting the QA inspection done and actually getting the repairs done. Yeah. Well, I think sometimes it's crazy, but like the hardest 
part is that last 2% of getting those houses finished. You know, okay, mm-hmm. it's 98% complete. It's contractor complete, but it still needs this or this or this. Right. And it's nice that our, you know, the the gentleman who does the inspections for us for Bulldog worked for an inspection company. So mm-hmm. he knows what he's looking for in terms of safety and functionality mm-hmm. and, and the like. And then we have a representative from our property management company go in and do an inspection as well mm-hmm. because she knows if I have to rent this to, you know, my girlfriend or my sister or my uncle, you know, these are the things that I would not want them to have to deal with. Right. You know, the door doesn't close right or there's this or mm-hmm. there's that. Um, and I know that then us getting all that finished before someone moves in just starts everything off on the right foot mm-hmm. and prevents, you know, work orders um, in the future. At, yeah. least, at least that's the hope. That's the right. theory. And I feel like ever since we've started doing that, we have been getting less work orders and less feedback on it, which is what ideally we are wanting. Whereas before, kind of talking about the nightmare part of it, it felt like we were constantly going back and then we would get a tenant in place and then it was like work order after work order for certain things, minor things. Right. Um, and now that we have changed that process, process, it has been going a lot better. I feel like we're not getting nearly as many work orders. Mm-hmm. Well, that's good. That's mm-hmm. the goal. And right. Sometimes it takes a little longer, you know, on the front end then, but I think it's probably worth it to absolutely do it right and, you know, not have the issues mm-hmm. um, after it's, it's after it's been turned over, basically. Yeah, for sure. 100%. Yeah. Well, do you have anything else you want to talk about? I don't think so. I don't either. All right. Well, that's all that we have for you guys today on Real Talk, which is Real Talk for real estate investors. And we always end it with invest smart and live happy. Thanks, guys. Nothing on this show should be considered specific personal or professional advice. Please consult an appropriate tax, legal, real estate, financial, or business professional for individualized advice. Opinions and information on this show are not guaranteed. All investment strategies have the potential for profit or loss.